r slash ask reddit what are people ashamed of that they should be proud of buying condoms congrats on the sex and good on you for wanting to reduce the risk of pregnancy or sti transmission i think of how many times as a young man i would sheepishly bring condoms up to the counter making sure to buy a few other innocent things as well so it didn't look like i just needed condoms i can only figure my mindset was oh no what if this cashier thinks i have sex now i buy them off amazon like an adult yep condoms duct tape sandpaper bleach and a rubber duck keep it inconspicuous Overweight people always seem ashamed about doing exercise. Probably because people tend to laugh at fat people running or at the gym. That stuff should be commended. When I was in law school I put on a surprising amount of weight. So during bar prep I went to the gym at like 1am so I could distress and look like an idiot without anyone noticing. I work out at home because uh, I'm too poor to afford a gym membership. B. I look ridiculous trying to lift weights qualifying in something at a later age than people typically do going out there and starting something new or pulling your finger out your ass and going for things you want is cool just got my bachelor's degree at 39 took me longer than most to figure out what i wanted to do anytime an addict reaches out for help even if they just ask for help with harm reduction i couldn't agree more i wish things were different in how society handles addiction they're not criminals these people need help but they can't ask for it for fear of being imprisoned. I've had a few family members that really struggled with addiction of the worst sort. Heroin, meth, all of it. One died a few years back. One is 5 years I think. Sober and is also one of the greatest human beings I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. He's alive because he reached out for help when he needed it most. Our family was there to help him. There's no shame in asking for help. We all need a friend to lean on from time to time. Learning a second language and not being all the way fluent yet. I'm always super impressed when someone is learning a language. It's sad when they think they will get made fun of for saying something incorrectly. It's quite the opposite. I have massive respect for people taking on that challenge. Yes, I never realized how difficult it is to learn a second language until I took the challenge upon myself. Whenever I have the chance to practice my French. I take the chance. I've been mocked for my accent and the fact that I take so long to respond. Pausing to think of the right words. Saying UHH a lot. And asking French speakers to slow down. I actually get pretty offended when someone mocks my French because I'm trying really hard and instead of being congratulated for my efforts or encouraged, I'm mocked for not being fluent in a language that I'm working my ass off to learn. Now my mind is literally blown every time I speak with someone who learned a new language, because I realized how much effort it takes to do. Seriously learning a new language is like adapting a new lifestyle. You have to live and breathe the language. Trying to immerse yourself in it in any way you can. School kids often try to hide it when they get good scores. The worst part is that it's not uncommon for their classmates to actually mock those who get good scores. I was one of those kids. I held my grades to a higher standard than my friends did. If I just said that I didn't do as good as I'd hoped, then all my friends were reacting like I got a bad score. If I said I got a 75%, people would tell me not to be upset. I've seen that happen. But what I mean is when a kid is genuinely ashamed of being smart because they'd be seen as a nerd. Themselves. Some people really freak out thinking what others may think of them. I always think. Do I actively remember anyone I saw during my walk over here? No, not really. Unless they were really noticeable but even then it's usually just a hum. Interesting. Ah and gone. This is exactly what I've been thinking about for the last couple of days and how to actually make myself not give a shit about what others may think of me even for just a small amount of time until I walk past them on the street. Anxiety is a beach. And it could really just duck off already. Buying pads or tampons. It's a normal human function. Nobody is ashamed of buying toilet paper and honestly I think bowel movements are more gross than periods. I'm a man and I've bought them a number of times for my so and if I ever get strange looks I just tell the cashier they are for me. It's a heavy one. In public schools, especially in less affluent areas, 
Kids are sometimes ashamed of being excited about learning and liking school in general. There is a pervasive attitude that being a dong and not taking school seriously is somehow cool. While being a nerd is terrible. I don't notice the same attitude in private schools or competitive charter schools. Kids will make fun of anyone that deviates from the norm. Too tall. Too short. Too fat. Too skinny. Too smart. Too dumb. Avoiding the opposite gender too much. Being too friendly with the opposite gender. Whatever. If you're more than one standard deviation from the mean. You're a target. Kids will make fun of anyone they can. A lot of the time. Being single. So many people spend so much time and effort looking for. Getting into. And refusing to get out of relationships too much for the sake of just not being single. So much of that time could be better spent on developing themselves and their own interests. Whereas the relentless pursuit of relationships and staying in mediocre ones is the opposite effect. Not everyone needs to be paired up all of the time. I agree there is unbelievable social pressure to be in a couple. And that the older you get, the more your social options are reduced if you are single. But I still don't think this is a good reason. People who are single by choice, not celibate, chaste, against monogamy, or whatever. Just people who would rather not be in a couple and doing well in that situation unless there is a relationship that will truly improve it. I think many people have spent their whole mature lives either in a relationship or looking for one, and never really took the time to think about who they really are. It really makes me sad that there is no acceptable pathway to adulthood that doesn't involve permanently pairing up with someone. And pretty early, it's either that or be a pathetic neckbird or crazy cat lady. What about a golden girl's living situation before you have to wait for all your husbands to die to justify you can live with friends? Even single mothers by choice, which is a reasonably strong community and movement seem to view themselves as failures in life who decided to have a kid on their own before it was too late. It's okay to be chilled free by choice with a partner. Why not partner free by choice and have a child? I hate the why aren't you dating anyone? Question. It's not like I'd turn down a date with someone I met and enjoyed. But I'm not willing to slog through bad online date after bad online date just to find someone so people will stop asking why I'm single. I'm happy with being single. I answer to nobody in my personal life. I do what I want. I save my money. I buy things I enjoy. I go out with my friends when I want it. Other than the sex, there's no draw for me to find anyone. The problem is many single people are stigmatized as being single due to some flaw. Being physically unattractive. Being impossible to live with. Having poor hygiene or social skills. Etc. Most people consciously or unconsciously assume single people are single because something about them makes them undesirable as mates. At my college. There's a certain shame associated with being a first gen college student. Um. That's absolutely amazing and should be a point of pride. It's not just a reflection of the student but of the parents who help them get there. I went to college for 5 years, and I never once heard anyone talk about how many generations of their family had been to college. That's pretty weird that people at your school even talk about it, let alone put any weight on it. I mean, we are a small, formally, legacy based school, and it's a culture thing. I also float in the sociology circles which is where first gen students, who are a large percentage of sociology majors, tend to end up. Admitting you don't know something, if you're in a debate or argument it's 100% okay to say you know. I actually don't know anything about that but would love to get back to you on it once I do some research to better understand it. It's okay to not know everything all the time. Admitting you are wrong or uneducated on certain topics takes guts. Loud farts in public bathrooms. I mean, where else are you gonna do it? But I don't want people to hear me toot toot while I poot poot. Being poor when they were younger when they are successful now. It's way more impressive to come up from poverty. I'm one of those people. And I am proud of it. It's interesting. When I look at around at my cousins in my large extended family. They all had more prosperous, middle class upbringings than me. And my brother. And today the two of us are the only ones with good careers. Several are still dependent on parents to various extents well into their 30s. Could be coincidence. But I like to think it's not. I remember as a kid going to visit my cousins in LA. And it seemed straight out the Brady Bunch. New car. Suburban house. Swimming pool. A cat and a dog. 
nothing at all like my life. I was so jealous at the time. Talking about their mental illnesses. So much stigma behind it but I've learned to talk about it in very calm and neutral spaces or conversations. It shocks people because we are used to there being drama behind it but I incorporate it into everyday conversations because I want people to just get used to it. I'm not ashamed of my depression. Anxiety. That time I got Baker acted on my suicide attempts. I'm just surprised I'm still here. I'm proud that I ducking survived and made it through. This is a biggie for me. I attempted suicide 2 years ago and through therapy. I realized I've had depression and anxiety since I was a child. I am very open about it and am not ashamed to talk about it. I wish more people would be open about their struggles. Then others would realize that they don't have to hide it. Taking any kind of risk that doesn't pay off. Asking someone out. Quitting your job to start a new one. Completely changing career course. Getting out of a long term relationship that was good but not the one. Moving your life completely to another city state country. Everyone is always telling people that things like this aren't a big deal and they should just do it. These kinds of things are a huge deal. And on top of that they don't work out as often as they do work out. And they fail miserably as often as they become a resounding triumph. It's really hard. It takes a ton of courage to take a risk in your life. Especially when it is seen as leaving a somewhat comfortable situation for an unknown. I think we should applaud everyone who does this. From the person who changes careers and becomes the next Jean Goodall. To the one who moves their life to another continent and goes destitute. Life altering risks should always be applauded because they show tremendous courage and the drive to better oneself. A bad childhood. If you can overcome that. You should be proud. If is the key word here. Or you don't get over it and it haunts you into adulthood. Woohoo. Getting rejected after asking someone out. You already have more than a lot of people in terms of confidence. Selling out friends family that murdered someone innocent. Raped. Abused. ETC someone to the police. Just because they have always been a friend or their family doesn't make them a good person. Don't feel bad. Well. I'm ashamed that I had to cut ties with almost all of my family, from both my parents sides which are both huge families. A lot of them ended up going down a path I wanted nothing to do with. I am maybe one of just two or three that ended up doing something positive with life. Some dude on end thought that we needed to masculinize cycling because it was being considered a sport for libs and new males and he didn't want to be grouped with them. If your masculinity is so fragile that you'd quit your favorite sport over some idiot considering you gay, you've got issues. I had a patient ashamed that they needed two jobs to pay the bills and provide for their family. This particular individual is hands down the hardest working, most respectful human being I have come across. Their predicament is unfortunate, but if they continue to bust their butt, good things will surely follow. Going to community college. It's the same education as the first two years of uni at a fraction of the cost. And if you're there to learn a trade it's all the education you need. I've heard so medical schools don't accept community college credits, but for every other profession no one cares. Having boring hobbies like reading. Sorry I hate leaving my house and talking to people and would rather read about fictional shit. Also, working in service jobs like fast food, retail, janitorial services, etc. How are you going to shame someone for making an honest living? I am in a fairly popular meme. Stretch marks. Their hobbies and interests. I find people are way too shy about talking about the things the things they love. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price. Bruh.